Welcome to track one, day two at the Diana Initiative. And this is our 11 o'clock talk. So before I get started, a couple of quick announcements or reminders to go and visit and have some fun at our fabulous villages. Lock picking, discover a new skill, make something at our maker village. We have a great careers village. And also we have a fabulous row of support from our vendors just outside these doors. So stop outside, say hello, pay them a visit. And I would love to say a heartfelt thank you to all of them. We have a great list here. Call a few of them out. There's Microsoft, there is Amazon, there's Remediant, there's Recorded Future, just to name a few. Stop by, say hi. And now without any further ado, let me please introduce our next speaker, Christina Stokes, who is a VCSO and the Vice President of Operations with SALT Cybersecurity, will talk to us about autumn, uh, attendant tracking, um, applicant tracking systems. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, so today, yes, we're gonna be talking about your cyber career and translating your transferable skills, but we're also going to talk about AI and um, I just realized I have the wrong PowerPoint presentation up, but we're just going to go with it. So here we are. All right. This ties into the AI and NLP with um, ATS systems. So today we're going to talk about ATS systems and your resumes. What do you need to do? to get your resume through ATS systems so that the right people see your application and you rise to the top as a candidate for whatever role that you're applying to. Um, about me, my name is Christina Strokes. I've been in the industry for a few years now. I earned a dual degree, a dual master's in cyber policy and an MBA. Um, previous to that, I worked uh, in the government. <laughs> I worked uh, overseas, lived overseas for over 20 years and worked on U.S. military and NATO bases for U.S. naval security as a civilian and also the United States Naval Hospital in Sicily. I was a civilian journalist on a military base in Sicily for almost a decade before relocating to the United States about 15 years ago. Um, and then I went into executive uh, recruiting and technical recruiting and moved on into nonprofit executive management before shifting into cybersecurity. Um, today, we're gonna cover your different um, skill set areas and also how ATS systems work. Who uses ATS systems, what the ATS systems are, and how AI algorithms are used to essentially read your resume and pull that information into the system so that they are either matching you to the job you applied for or unfortunately rejecting you to the job that you applied for. So the cybersecurity industry, it's a large industry. There are so many areas that you could go into. So you really have to ask, what do you enjoy and where do you see yourself? Different areas in cybersecurity include GRC, governance, regulation, and compliance, threat intelligence, risk assessment, offensive cyber, defensive cyber, security operations and incident response, security architect and cloud security. There's also more. I'm sure you guys have all seen this uh, diagram with all of the cybersecurity domains broken down into different areas. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, this is one chart you can look at to kind of see all of the different domains and where the different areas could be of interest for you to help define your careers. When we talk about moving into cybersecurity, if you're coming in from an industry outside of it, you're going to want to look at what transferable skills you have. Um, some transferable skills that can, you can use from any industry within the cybersecurity industry are 
problem solving, analytical reasoning, leadership, adaptability, um, computer skills, of course, are important, writing, creativity, attention to detail. All of those skills have places within the cybersecurity industry. All of these skills can be used in multiple different positions. So if you're, you're coming in to the industry from outside of it, you don't have to be completely technical. You have skills that can translate into your careers. When I was uh, working 20 years ago, I was an executive recruiter, and my job was to help um, military officers who were transitioning from the military into civilian careers. One of my one of the things that I would do for them is look over their military resume, essentially, which is full of acronyms. It's in the military, it's like a whole other language. Everything is acronyms. Um, and basically translate their military skills into civilian skills so that they could then go apply to civilian roles and translate their military experience into long-term civilian careers. So that's one thing that you can do coming into cybersecurity. Some examples of um, more transferable skills are, um, hold on, I, um, are facilitating group discussions, um, budgeting, evaluating, developing um, rapport, rapport with uh, customers if you're in a sales position, business development, um, leadership, teamwork. There are a lot of different skills that you can apply into your career, but also use on your resume to help highlight what you're bringing into the industry. One exercise that you can do is to ask yourself, why did you get into cybersecurity? What are you most passionate about? What are your strengths? What are your goals? What types of roles interest you the most? And where do you see yourself in a year, in three years, in five years? What trajectory do you want your career to take? When you're thinking about identifying your own skills, think about what type of work activities do you enjoy and love to do? Other questions that you can ask yourself are, what are your personal qualities? What types of experience do you have professionally and personally? And this can include also volunteer work that you have done. A lot of people getting into cybersecurity find that one way into it is to volunteer and become involved with different organizations. For me, one of the things I did was join Women in Cybersecurity, which is a great organization. And it led me to meeting a lot of wonderful people that are now within my network um, and helped me get a foot in the door into cybersecurity. So think about the different roles that you can, or different volunteer areas that you can join in based on your own interests. So, and there are so many different organizations out there uh, that you can join and leverage. Um, also ask, you know, what are you good at doing? What are your abilities? What are you capable of? If you're in a position today that you aren't enjoying, identify exactly what is it do you not enjoy? What would that ideal role be? And sit down and really think about it. Think about what your ideal day would be like. What work are you doing? What kind of people are you working with? What type of projects are you touching? Do you want to move into more of a leadership role if you're not in one? Do you want to be more in a more technical role if you're not currently in one? And then figure out what do you need to do to have that become a reality for you. So when you're looking at your resume and you're thinking about your next role, before we even get into the ATS systems, and applying to jobs, you really need to know what you're coming in with. So one of the things that the ATS systems do is use keywords. The applicant tracking systems 
use keywords based on the job descriptions put in there by hiring managers and recruiters to help filter candidates for each role. So if your job description as a hiring manager says, I need X, Y, Z, when these resumes come in, it's going to look for X, Y, Z. And if, as a candidate, your resume does not align, that ATS system is going to reject your application. And you won't move forward in the, in the process. Um, when we talk about resumes, we also talk about cover letters, which I like to refer to as essentially your elevator pitch to the company you're applying to. Your cover letter gives you the opportunity to show that employer what you're bringing to the table, but also to show them a little bit about your personality, because it's not a hard resume with just facts and information. This is your opportunity to shine and show them who you are and who they would be hiring if they hired you. You can talk about your five top skills that you would bring to that role. Um, and you could also discuss how those skills would help the security goals of that organization and how those skills would help you and or your team communicate and work with other departments because nobody works in a bubble. So write that with your next role in mind and write it with the role that you're applying to in mind. So when we're preparing for your, your resume, you're, you're preparing your resume and you're preparing for interviews, this is where we start getting deep into the ATS systems, the applicant tracking systems. There are a number of different applicant tracking systems that different organizations use, and organizations small to large use them. Of course, the enterprise level organizations use them, like Amazon and Microsoft. Um, some of the more, more popular ones are iSIMS, Telio, Greenhouse, Workday. Um, when they're using these systems, they do at times link them into LinkedIn. LinkedIn isn't exactly an applicant ATS system. It kind of acts like one, but it is not exactly the same as iSIMS or Greenhouse. They operate a little bit differently. Um, one of the things that LinkedIn has done is create a portal for recruiters and hiring managers and candidates to connect and list their jobs. But those applications on LinkedIn tie back into whatever ATS system that company is actually using, because that's where their talent pipeline is. That's where they're tracking their communications. That's where they're tracking where each applicant is at in that process, in that hiring process. Um, and it's helping the recruiters filter out the candidates that don't match. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize that ATS systems are being used and they're not formatting or optimizing their resumes to get past those filters. There are pros and cons to the ATS systems. For recruiters, it helps you when you have a job opening and you have 500 applicants. It can be really difficult to go through every single resume when you're also up against deadlines. So having these, these ATS systems, the AI algorithms, look at all of the different keywords that are being requested helps filter things out. But again, there is a drawback because you could be 100% qualified for a role, but because you haven't optimized your resume, your application is going to be rejected and this company is gonna lose out on an awesome potential employee. Um, so there are pros and cons to the system. The natural language processing within ATS systems isn't the greatest, and that's where we run into the issues with the different formatting. Um, even the language that you're using in your resume can be an issue. So one thing that you would want to do as you're preparing your resume is to look at that job description that you are applying, the, the role that you're applying to, 
read that job description and break it down. Look at the words that they are using repeatedly because those are the key words that you're gonna want to have in your resume so that you can align to that job description. You're also gonna want to look at how that job description is formatted and what type of language they're using. For example, some job descriptions say work experience, other job descriptions say areas of expertise. Um, you want to format your resume so that it aligns with that job description, so there's a match. Um, be truthful. Don't list anything on your resume that is not factual, because that's unethical. You can use tools, and I'll get into this a little bit later, to, that will scan your resume against whatever job description that you're applying to, so that you can see a percentage match. And you, before you even apply, you can make adjustments to your resume, rescan it, and once you're happy with it, officially apply for, for a position. Um, when you're formatting your resume, make sure your resume and cover letter are readable by ATS. Use simple fonts like sans serif for surf fonts. Calibri is a popular one to use, and that's very easily readable by a lot of these systems. And keep your size 11 to 12. ATS can have issues with shading, italics, underlying text, any fancy text, it won't read it. <laughs> and it'll get kicked out. Um, it also has issues sometimes with hyperlinks. One of the tricks is if you can highlight text in a PDF, then it is readable by ATS. That is most often true. But if you have concerns, use Microsoft Word, just regular Microsoft Word doc, and submit that way, and the bots will be happy. So as I mentioned, there are different scanning tools that you can use for your resume. There's Job Scan, Resume Match, and Resonate. They're all a little bit different. Some are just direct keyword matching. Others, um, like I believe Resonate, do more long form. So if you're applying to a job and the job description has longer forms and you can tell this is typically more not in a practitioner role, but probably for more management, th that those tools will work better for those applications. But what you'll want to do is essentially upload your resume to one of these tools along with the job description that you are applying to so that you can cross reference and see where you stand if you were going to apply to that position today, using the resume you have today, what match percentage would you have? Where would you stand against other applicants? Or would you just be completely rejected because you haven't optimized your resume? Um, the, the ATS systems, these AI algorithms, they're not reading the resumes the way humans read them. So as a recruiter who is reading a resume, you're, you're reading it word for word. You're going over every position. You're reading the, the, the dates that they were there, the responsibilities that they have. The bots aren't doing that. They're essentially just looking for keywords and making those matches. So when you're writing your resume, keep it concise and use basic language because that's what the bots are looking for. And watch the acronyms. So for example, if you have um, a degree, sometimes MBA might not get picked up, but Master of Business Administration will. So even small things like that can throw off your match percentage with these ATS systems. Um, your resume is going to be scanned on your hard skills and your soft skills. It'll, it'll scan for your education and certificates if you have them, if those are relevant to the job that you're applying to. Um, and it'll help identify those keywords in your resume. If you keyword stuff your resume, you're hurting yourself. There are times when candidates will apply to a position and essentially keyword stuff their resume by just plugging all of the keywords they think are relevant into different positions just to get that pull, just to get that match but you still have to get past the human, even if you get past the ATS system. So a recruiter or hiring manager will see that and see you've just keyword stuffed your resume and reject you. 
I've also seen um, candidates who have tried to do the invisible keyword stuffing, where they essentially take the job description sometimes or whatever relevant keywords they think apply and put them in the tiniest font at the bottom of their resume in white font. So it's essentially invisible to the human eye, but readable to ATS. And of course, their resume does get pulled through. It does rise. It is seen as a match, but the recruiter will see what has happened. Because on the back end of that, we can see you, in, you did the invisible keyword stuffing at the bottom of your resume. That's unethical and your resume will be rejected. Align your job description on your resume to the job description to the role that you're applying to. Um, just make sure everything is aligned. So if you're applying to multiple positions, you might end up with different resumes for each position. Every company is potentially using a different ATS system. Um, and of course, every company is putting out those job descriptions with qualifications and requirements differently than the others are. So, we are coming to the end of my talk. Um, I am open to questions if you have them. Any questions? No? Okay, well, thank you for your time today. Thank you all very much. Thank you.